Who remembers when the solar system had nine planets? Maybe you do, and maybe you don't. It was 2006 when astronomers decided that Pluto no longer made the cut, and almost overnight, the planetary club shrank. Since then, a lot of people have remained upset that our beloved Pluto was downgraded from planet to not a planet. It's now classed as a dwarf planet. And actually, it's not the only one. Some of them used to be thought of as planets, some of them never had that luxury. All of this comes back to the exact definition of what a planet is, how hard it actually is to come up with a good definition for one, and why we're uncomfortable with the idea of letting hundreds of icy worlds beyond the orbit of Neptune be planets too. These are the forgotten planet, planetitos that are quietly being erased by a definition. Here, let's talk about why Pluto does fail our current definition of a planet, and how many new planets would be ordained if we relaxed that definition a little bit to let Pluto back in the club. The modern argument about how many planets there are centers around whether there are eight or nine of them. Essentially, whether or not we should count Pluto. If we go back further in time, what was considered a planet was a little bit different. The word planet itself comes from the Greek word for wanderer and was used to describe any object that moved across the sky. At this time, seven objects were considered planets, namely the Sun and Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. The notable absence here is, of course, the Earth, as that wasn't seen as a wanderer through space back then, but rather the unmoving centre of the universe. And the inclusion of both the Moon and the Sun is understandable at the time, but a little bit strange with our modern viewpoint. In the 1600s, following Copernicus and Galileo, we had the heliocentric revolution, where the Sun was acknowledged as the centre of the solar system. The Moon was also demoted to a satellite, and we had the familiar planets of Mercury, Venus, Earth has joined the club, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. This remained the family lineup for 150 years or so, until Uranus was discovered in 1781, bringing us to seven planets in the solar system. 1801 then brought a new addition, or a few new additions, but they actually didn't last too long. To start with, Ceres was discovered between Mars and Jupiter, and for a while was accepted as a planet. The same then happened for Pallas in 1802, Juno in 1804, and Vesta in 1807, all new planets at the time, bringing us up to 11 planets, which is the largest number of officially recognised planets at any one time. However, as more and more objects were discovered in this same region of space between Mars and Jupiter, having more and more planets made people a bit uncomfortable and led to some questions. It also led to a new classification for these objects in the 1850s, and they became known as asteroids or minor planets, and the collection of them between Mars and Jupiter became known as the asteroid belt, with its population continuing to grow as more objects were discovered. Ceres is the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, and it's now classified as a dwarf planet, but we'll get onto that group of objects in a little bit. With these objects now known as asteroids instead of planets, we would be back to seven planets, but the discovery of Neptune in 1846 bumps us to eight official planets. This remained the case for almost a century, until the discovery of our little friend Pluto, discovered by Clyde Tombaugh in 1930. Initially, it was widely accepted as a planet, giving us the nine planets of the solar system. This laid the foundations, though, for a familiar issue, similar to what happened with the asteroids. In the 1990s and 2000s, more objects similar in size and location to Pluto were discovered, in a region of the solar system beyond Neptune, known as the Kuiper Belt. In 2005, another of these objects called Ares was discovered, and it was slightly larger than Pluto, and this was essentially the straw that broke the planet's back. Again, adding more planets felt uncomfortable. People didn't want to have dozens or even more planets, so a rethink of the definition was begun. There was no real official definition back then, just what felt right. However, the issue of coming up with a consistent definition of a planet that included the accepted lineup without adding dozens more was actually really difficult. It needed to include the eight planets that everyone accepted. Any definition that removed any of these was deemed to be unacceptable and might even be ridiculed, so they had to stay. 
However, the rocky inner planets of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are very different in many ways to the gas giants of Jupiter and Saturn and the icy giants of Uranus and Neptune, and the distant tiny Pluto too. It's like trying to define a continent or an island. It sounds like it should be easy, but it's way harder than you expect. In 2006, though, the IAU, the International Astronomical Union, came up with an official definition of a planet, something we didn't have before, and Pluto was really just collateral damage. They said a planet had to fulfill three criteria. Number one, they have to orbit the sun. Number two, they have to be large enough and massive enough for gravity to be important and make it a more or less spherical object. Or more technically, they have to be in hydrostatic equilibrium. Third, they have to have cleared their orbits of other important objects, or in other words, be the dominant object in their orbit. This means either merging with, absorbing, capturing, or flinging out most smaller objects in the orbit, and being the biggest object in that orbit. This last one was the criteria that Pluto failed, and it was reclassified as a dwarf planet, which is now the official classification given to objects that pass criteria 1 and 2, but fail number 3. There were so many objects being found in the Kuiper Belt, many of similar size, that none of them were dominant or could be said to have cleared their orbit, so they are no longer considered planets, but dwarf planets instead. Other named objects that fit this criteria, alongside Pluto, are Ares, Haumea, and Makemake, along with Ceres in the asteroid belt, which is now a dwarf planet by definition and an asteroid by location. This brings us back to eight official planets, but it doesn't have to be this way. The eight planets vary wildly, and I think it's fair to say they're only grouped together for historical reasons, when they didn't know they were so different. It would probably make more sense to split them up a bit more, but it would also feel weird to do that for a lot of people, so we tend not to. We're happy with those eight as they are. For a bit of fun though, let's think about how many planets we would have if we relax the definition to the pre-2006 ways. The obvious criteria to drop here is the third one, and let's allow planets that haven't cleared their orbit. This, of course, re-promotes Pluto to a full planet, as well as giving Ceres, Eris, Haumea, and Makemake membership to the club too. There are almost certainly many other objects that would count though. None in the asteroid belt though, Ceres really is unique in that case, but definitely in the Kuiper belt, or even more distant in the solar system. The questions here are largely that most of the objects are so distant and so small that we can't actually see if they're round or not, as they cover too few pixels in our images to know for sure. It almost certainly includes named objects like Orcus, Varda, Varuna, and Gonggong, along with some other objects that are quite hard to pronounce, and others like the mysterious Sedna, which has an 11,000 year elongated orbit around the sun. And that takes it about 19 times further from the sun than Pluto ever is. The truth is, there are likely dozens or even hundreds of Kuiper Belt objects that pass the definition of orbiting the sun, being mostly round, but not clearing their orbits. Some of them we already know about for sure. Some of them we know exist, but we can't confirm if they're round yet. And some of them are yet to be discovered. But we know there is so much stuff out there that many, many of them will fall into this category. This means if we re-promote Pluto to planet status using this relaxed definition, then we would end up with tens or probably even hundreds of planets. Given what we know, I think calling it roughly 150 is a pretty good estimate for how many solar objects this would include. For now though, officially, Pluto is not a planet. None of those hundreds of dwarf planets, minor planets, or asteroids are actually planets. They and the Pluto planet defenders will have to keep dreaming for now. The good news is that Pluto doesn't care if he's a planet or not. He's clueless out there in the far reaches of the solar system, but most of us love him anyway. If you have any other questions or comments about this, then leave them down below. My next video will be all about the other thought experiments we could play, relaxing the rules of what makes a planet a planet, and seeing what becomes a planet in each case. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. If you're further in the future, then that video might be out right now. So hit just here to watch it now. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.